All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do a video on uh, some of the older uh, ten personnel two back runs we used to use, and I'll and I'll talk to you about why I'm going back and showing you some of that stuff. Make sure you check out some of our partners. Dome Hats, the head the headwear sponsor for play fast football and the current high school that I'm at. This is our current high school white hat, orange bill, our logo on the front, swords up on the Velcro on the back. So you can change and customize all your hats, change the color of the panels, change the style of the hat, change the back from Velcro to snapback, however you want. Their online hat builder is, is a customizable uh, deal where you make the hat, you tell the story of your hat. Every hat has a story. Let Dome help you tell yours. Baker Sporting Goods, which is a company I use for my coaches' apparel, my players' apparel, our player uniforms. Any time we put together a, a, uh, a fan store or a fan page for our boosters or our parents, it's always through Baker Sporting Goods, so make sure you check them out. Just Play Football, a more powerful way to present your playbook and your game plan for your players. It's the digital diagram or digital play drawing tool that I use uh, when I'm going to be doing webinars, speaking at clinics, or doing anything for my Patreon site. All right, and it's a more powerful way to get information to your players, so make sure you check out Just Play. Game Strat, the sideline replay system that we use here. Uh, if you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, make sure you check out Game Strat. Follow me on Twitter, CoachMac8740. We have a Game Strat giveaway through the national championship game that we are doing right now. Get a $500 credit towards any Game Strat sideline replay system next year if you are the winner. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Work on elbows in, thumbs up. Uh, proper eye placement where your eyes need to be on a target, how to come out of your stance, what to do with your hips. Different resistance coils that make it tougher as kids get stronger and older and better at striking. So you can change the resistance coils to make it tougher on your players. Make sure you check out Difference USA. High and tight ball security training aid that has panels inside with sensors. It beeps and makes an auditory beep when you're holding the ball correctly, when you have it where it needs to be. All the points of pressure, uh, pressure are properly applied and you have the football high and tight where it belongs. You hear a beep when you hear the beep you know that that's how you're supposed to carry the football. If you don't hear the beat, you know you've got something wrong or you're doing something wrong, so make sure you check that out, all right? So, you know, they say if you want to prepare for the future, you've got to study the past. So recently I started thinking about um, all the things that are going on in the last couple of years on offense and started looking at college games and what they're doing right now on offense. And, and I talked the other day about um, we're seeing way more uh, OF or GF counter using a sniffer instead of GT counter, even though you're still seeing a lot of GT counter. But we were talking about OF and GF counter and why you're seeing it more. And, and my opinion was the, the, that, that Y off hybrid tight end fullback guy that you're starting to see is becoming more of a passing game matchup. And because he's more of a passing game matchup problem, he's probably less inclined to handle kicking and digging out uh, on the front side of power plays. He might not be inclined to kick or dig out a 280-pound defensive end, but he is probably really good blocking linebackers in space. So when you run the counter theory, you get him wrapped on a linebacker in space and you let your offensive guard, who is uh, more inclined to kick a defensive lineman, he becomes the kicker and the sniffer wide off tight end becomes the wrapper. So I went back to our best year that I've ever had as an offensive coach in 2012 at a school that I was at. And I went back and started looking because I know that we were a heavy OFGF counter team that year. And I went back and started looking at all that stuff. And when I went back, what I found was, to me, what we were doing that was most effective is we had a dual-threat quarterback that was a very good inside runner. He liked to run between the tackles. He liked to punish people. He was very physical. He was one of our strongest kids in the weight room. He was a kicker for us. Almost every kick on kickoff was a touchback. He was kicking 45-yard field goals for us after you know, 10 play, 8 play drives as a quarterback. So he was a phenomenal player, one of the best players I've ever coached in high school. And he was a potent inside runner. So when we went to 10 personnel sets, we would go into 10 personnel sets and we would take the tailback out and bring that hybrid tight end fullback, Y off type guy. We'd bring him in and we'd play a sniffer with no running back. All right. So, excuse me. So we'd be in 10 personnel. We'd have a sniffer and no running back. And essentially our quarterback became the running back. All right, so what we did was we, we gave teams a 10 personnel look. So this happens to be two by two. So we gave them a 10 personnel two by two look, and we tried to force them into defending the two by two formation. All right, while having a sniffer in the game, we still had all of our 20 personnel gap runs. All right, so we were still able to run power. We were still able to run 
OF or GF count. Okay, we were still able to run isolation theories. So any two-back theory that you can think of, we were able to do using the quarterback as the tailback, all right, and the sniffer is obviously as, as the lead block. So when, when you listen to, to announcers or, or analysts talk about, you know, the college football game and, and dual-threat quarterbacks and mobile running quarterbacks, they always talk about how it makes the game 11-on-11. 11 11. It kind of adds some gaps in the run games at times because now you get into 10 personnel, you force the defense to defend 10 personnel. Usually when defending 10 personnel, the defense doesn't have to worry about a lot of lead isolation theories. All right, so their run fits are, are designed to fit the runs that they think they're going to see from 10 personnel. So you make them defend 10 personnel, but then you run... 20 personnel schemes. Now, it just so happened that I had the quarterback to do it that year, so all the pieces fit. It just so happened that we were as big up front with one of our guards going to the University of Kentucky. So anytime you have great results, it's always going to be because you have really, really good players. But when I went back and studied that, and, and I came across you know, something I was looking at on Twitter or something that said, hey, you know, if we really want to invest and learn about the future, we really have to study our past. So I went back and I studied the best year we ever had, and I found that this two-by-two two set, all right, and what we would do more often than not is we would motion the H, and we would get to all of our different read game packages and then all of our quarterback counter packages. So we'd motion the H across, and we'd run jet sweep, we'd run power read, and then we'd run quarterback counter away from the motion, all right, and then we'd build in a play action here or there and some other things to protect us off the jet sweep stuff. But that was, from this set, primarily what we would do in the run game. Okay, and then we would run our normal passing game. So we would run our quick game from here. We'd full slide the line and put the sniffer on the edge. And then we would throw our, our, our drop back passing concept. So we would throw flood and get the F in the flat. We would throw snag corner, F in the flat. We, we'd throw curl post or curl wheel, F in the flat. All right, so we, we, we ran mesh a little bit. So we still were able to get five people out in a route and run all of our natural passing game out of two by two. So we were able to do all the things that we wanted to do from that set, and it forced people to defend 10 personnel while defending two back runs. All right, the very next thing we would do is we would do the same theory at a three by one. Okay, so what we would do is we would line up in three by one, and the jet player would be the number three, so that was my H. We put the sniffer to the single side, all right, so this was for us, this was the X, all right, this was the sniffer here, and then this was HYZ for us here, three by one. So what we did is we tried to force teams to defend three by one sets. So we tried to force teams to get into whatever they, you know, whatever their concept was to defend three by one sets. We tried to force teams to get into that look to defend three by one sets so that we could run our 20 personnel runs. So now what we would do is we would bring the H in motion from here, and now we would have jet, power read, Q power, Q counter, coming off of that all right, H back motion there, and we're running all of these 20 personnel gap schemes, lead schemes, isolation theories, whatever you want to look at it, however you want to look at it, and we're running them while making you defend three by one because, because this was my quarterback and not a wildcat scenario, we could still run all of our passing game combinations from three by one, we could leave the F in protection if we wanted to. We could turn a protection away from the F and leave him in to dual read or, or block inside the outside backer. We could quick game and turn the whole line and put the F on the edge. We could throw stand-ups or bubbles. We could do all the things that we wanted to do out of our 10 personnel sets if they gave us what we wanted. And then if they defended some of the things either in the passing game or the screen game and they gave us the box that we wanted, we could still attack with 20 personnel or two back runs. Okay? So... When I went back and studied that, I went back and I looked and I said, well, you know, why was that year so effective? And I found out that a lot of the 10 personnel stuff with quarterback runs was the stuff that was giving people, you know, the most problems. And the only thing, you know, the only two things about the offense that I'll say that, that were a little bit lacking in that time is we were too sniffer orientated, so we didn't have enough tendency or key breakers away from the sniffer, okay? And... At that time, I was not running true post-snap RPOs. So, you know, we were throwing some leverage screens and some access deals and, you know, giving the quarterback 
a chance to get the ball out of his hand versus heavy boxes, but we weren't a, a, a true RPO team. And now when I go back and I look at those sets, I think to myself, what if I was able to now take the RPOs that we use off of overhangs or off of whoever we want to RPO and still use those quarterback runs? So like for us, or just think about it, the simple, like people used to run stick draw. Right? So, so what if you were able to go all right, with your normal stick package there and access throw that could either be hitch or fade depending on coverage here, and now you're going to run some type of you know, quarterback lead ISO theory, isolate the mic, where the quarterback is going to either shuffle or he's going to step into the line for the run and he's going to read the overhang. If the overhang stays between two and three and doesn't get involved in the fit, you got quarterback ISO six on six. Okay? If the, if, if the overhang is inside of three or the overhang is in the fit, all right, you might be able to possibly throw all right, the, the, the stick to number three. If he's outside of three, your quarterback can raise up and throw the stick now. So now we're building in post-snap RPOs, all right, and we're building in deals that we're throwing off, off of the overhang. We could do the same thing. All right, you could do the same theory to the weak side. So what if we ran isolation to the weak side with the five-step glance to the X, and now based on where the weak safety was, the quarterback was eyeing him up. If he's down into the fit, we raise up and throw the glance. If the quarterback, if the weak safety is out of the fit and we got six in the box, we go ahead and we run the isolation theory. So going back and looking at that and studying it, okay, if I could, if I could add RPOs to this mix, and they would be quarterback one RPOs, obviously. If I could add RPOs to this mix, which now means I don't have to motion anybody in. All right, if I could add RPOs to this mix, and then, all right, if, if I could break the sniffer tendency. All right, and, you know, one of the ways, you'd, you know, you'd have to figure out, so if one of the ways that we could have done it with the jet stuff, with the sniffer tendency, is maybe we could have ran dart read, motion here, all right, take the F and arc release, to lead the motion player, but actually run a dart isolation theory, pulling a tackle, and now the quarterback reads the end, all right, and if the end takes away the jet, the quarterback is running dart away from the sniff. So what I started looking at was why were we so successful why are we so successful back then when we were running GF or RF counter? What were the things we were doing to, to put defenses in a bind? How much different is it eight years ago as it is today? And what I found out was all that stuff we were doing out of 10 personnel with 20 personnel two-back runs were, were really stressing the defense. And as somebody who's been a defensive coordinator, I understand the stress because you align to a 10 personnel set, but you're getting two-back runs. Are you able to fit two-back runs with the coverages that you're playing to defend 10 personnel? So I look back on it and I realized the stress that I was putting on defenses. And then I realized the shortcoming of what we were doing or... At that time, um, you know, the, 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 what we were missing at that point, and I started thinking about RPOs and breaking sniffer tendencies. If I could then go back and do some of these things again, I would build in tendencies that break always going to the sniffer, and I would build in quarterback RPOs, and now you take all the things that were effective for us eight years ago, you bring them into today's game with, with the things that we can now do with RPOs and access throws and then Getting, you know, learning that we need to get away from that sniffer tendency, and now you can build an even better package than you had eight years ago. But the interesting thing is, that stuff we were doing eight years ago, and it's still prevalent today. You're still seeing teams with dual threat or running quarterbacks that give teams issues because it makes the game 11 on 11. You make them account for run fits, and, and they have to fit two back runs while you're in 10 personnel. Add in RPOs, break the sniffer tendency, and now I think you're on to something that could be really, really good. So by studying some football the last couple of weeks and thinking about what I want to do and what we want to do in the future, it made me go back and look at what we've done in the past. Went back and looked at some stuff from 2012, which was the best offensive season I've ever had as a, as a coach. And lo and behold, I found out there's some things that we should probably work on doing again with some slight wrinkles. All right, so I appreciate everything you guys do for PlayFest. Uh, make sure if you're not a subscriber, you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a video or every time I do something on YouTube Live. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like this or don't like it so we know the, the content that you guys want to see. 
Always leave a message or, or a comment. If you want to leave a comment, I respond to everyone that I can see on my end. Follow me on Twitter, CoachMac8740, okay? And I'll go ahead and put that, all right, for you over here because we currently, 8740, all right? Oops. At CoachMac8740. Follow me on Twitter. Right now we are we are doing a giveaway with GameStrat based off the national championship game. Follow GameStrat, retweet with your winner and the final score. Tag two coaches for a chance to win a $500 credit to any sideline replay system from GameStrat next season. All right, guys, I appreciate everything you do for me. Stay safe out there. Good luck. Let's get off to a great new year. You won't play well until you play fast, and I'll catch you guys next time.